This old market in the heart of Guangzhou in southern China is bustling again. The coronavirus outbreak seems under control. Buyers and sellers are back in business. The stalls are full, fruit, vegetables, meat, but also live turtles, toads, and eels. And before the outbreak, you could also find snakes, rats, and crocodile meat here. They're nowhere to be seen now. On this amateur footage of similar markets before the epidemic, you can see live animals for sale in cages. Cats, dogs, porcupines, but also civet cats. But ever since the market in Wuhan has been designated as ground zero for the coronavirus pandemic, the sale and consumption of some wild animals are now banned in China. In this report broadcast on February 24th, the day the ban was announced, a biodiversity researcher specified which animals could be eaten. A few weeks ago, the Agriculture Ministry drafted a list of edible animals. Pangolins, civet cats, dogs and bats were not included. But putting an end to this practice won't be easy. In China, many people depend on the wildlife trade. In the south of the country, many former farmers in the past few years have moved into breeding bamboo rats, an Asian species. The trade is profitable and easy to set up. Uh, Mr. Jiang started this nine years ago. Bamboo rats brought him about 15,000 euros a year, or four times more than his old salary. Mr. Jiang made a small fortune off of this, but because of the outbreak, he can't sell his rats anymore. A dramatic twist for the farmer, who had invested 70,000 euros at the start. Back then, he had received support from the local government, who saw these farms as a way to alleviate poverty. The authorities are now offering a small compensation. 10 euros for every rat he gets rid of, not enough in his view. The Chinese wildlife trade is a 68 billion euro industry. For the head of this Asian Animal Rights Association, China has to compensate all those who lived off of it, or it will have trouble putting an end to the industry. It's going to be a very expensive decision, you know, and I think there's going to be an enormous amount of compensation that has to be given to those people that trade in wild species up until now, and will now have to find alternative livelihoods. During the SARS epidemic in 2003, 
the Chinese government had already vowed to end the wildlife trade. The promise was not kept.